I'm Jay. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. <clears throat> Unlike you, I'm not a parent, um, but I've been working in the disability field for about 13 years. I have also mad allergies. Uh, I don't know if any of you have those, but um, I've been suffering the last couple weeks, so sorry if I don't sound quite right. Uh, but I do, um, given the time, can I ask somebody to give me like a 15-minute signal? And I'll try to keep it to 15 or so minutes. Okay. Does anybody have a watch? Wait, you don't want everybody to do it. Just one. <laughs> okay. Maybe somebody really needs to get out of here within like 40 minutes. So, um, okay, again, my, my name is Jay O'Brien. I am co-founder and director of a new nonprofit, still relatively new, called Exceptional Lives. We're focused on changing the way parents and caregivers like you uh, get information. Uh, we have built a new web-based uh, process guide, we call it, a new web-based technology that helps you walk through what you need to know and do uh, to get access to the right uh, resources and services and supports for your child. Uh, very brief background on me. As part of those 13 years in the disability field, uh, I worked for the Special Olympics, the Autism Consortium, and now for Exceptional Lives. The, along the way, uh, myself and two co-founders, brilliant people who happen to be mothers of teenagers with disability, who I also met along the way, have identified a problem, uh, one that you likely are living through right now. Uh, it's that the information that you're responsible for uh, processing and digesting and acting upon is often overwhelming or complex, or unfamiliar, or all of those three things. So we're in 2014, 2015. Uh, many people are using the web to get answers and to look for information. So this is where we're starting. We're trying to come up with something that doesn't currently exist. And trust me, we looked for it. If somebody was doing this, especially here in Mass or New England, we wouldn't be duplicating that effort. But uh, nothing like this. Uh, exist. I was talking to Nicole earlier, and um, I think she was getting excited. Uh, we're still early stage, but I'm going to show you in a moment uh, what we're uh, what we're talking about. But what we are trying to do is give parents a place to go that's not Google, that's not this massive thing called the internet, where you really don't know where to start looking for stuff, and give you one go-to place where you can start at a square one and uh, start to walk through step by step in a manageable, calm collected way some of these otherwise unfamiliar or overwhelming processes and systems that you guys have to navigate. Uh, whether it's, it's, it is things related to you know, public schools or even early intervention or getting the initial diagnosis and evaluation in the first place, through the transition to adulthood and all the different aspects of life that you as parents have to navigate just in, the, in that one time frame of life, that uh, 14 to 22. Uh, time frame all the way through uh, end of life care. We're trying to give you a place, a single place to go online to start to make sense. Uh, now, no website is going to tell you everything you need to know, but we aim to kind of give you a good place to start. And then if you get to the point where you want to go looking for more, Google is your website. You can get 74.5 million results if, if you're like me and you type in autism. And even if you type in something very specific, you're getting hundreds of thousands of results. Who can, who can like, after the first three, make sense of that? So, uh, so that's what we're trying to solve, this information problem facing uh, parents. Now, um, the first um, process that we've taken on to kind of test uh, this new um, web-based process guide uh, website is in the area of safety preparedness. Uh, we chose that for a number of reasons, but basically it's very inclusive. Um, no matter what your disability or age of family member or where you live, um, this is something that could potentially benefit uh, you. But it's also something that uh, you, like me, am not expert in. I am not an expert in safety preparedness. Uh, it's tough to plan. It's tough to find the time to plan it. But we thought we would hey, build this model, test it in this one topical area. Uh, the good news is that this is our 16th workshop that we've done in the past four or five months. <coughs> so we've gotten a lot of good feedback, and now we're about to introduce guides in other areas like um, health insurance, mass health, uh, premium assistance, uh, those types of uh, issues, um, guardianship, and alternatives to guardianship. Um, 
Also, uh, accessing Social Security, SSI, SSDI, and other disability-related gov um, government benefits, either at the state or federal level, uh, and, and other things. So let me, um, because how much time do I have left? <laughs> All right, 10? All right, good, good. I'm going to start showing you um, how to access this. Um, on the sheets that um, we handed around, that's our website. You go to exceptionallives.org, and that's your um, gateway to... Uh, where we're putting these guides, and we're putting these guides on what we call a dashboard. If you go to our site, you click this uh, Access the Exceptional Lives Safety Plan Guide button, and that pops you in uh, to essentially um, a website where you have to enter your email and a password so that you can get access in, and only you can get access back into your own dashboard. Um, but this is where you will land. So right now we only have um, kind of what amount to three things published. Uh, when, in the coming weeks we're going to double that. Mm -hmm. And then in the coming years um, I think there are going to be dozens and dozens of these guides with good searching technology to allow you to either find what you're looking for quickly or if you don't know what you're looking for, um, we're thinking that through as well and we're going to try to make suggestions to you. Um, so that even if you don't know, and which is the problem with Google, you know, when you go sometimes searching in Google, you're not really sure what you're looking for, and it makes it really tough to find it. So, uh, but anyway, back to the present. Um, this is the, the first prototype guide, safety plan, uh, or safety preparedness. Just today, hours before I came down here, my colleague and I uh, published this health insurance guide, and this is where we talk about mass health, we talk about private insurance, we talk about uh, even if you don't have insurance, which isn't a big problem here in Massachusetts, but still two out of every hundred you know people don't have insurance here. We kind of coach you on how to get it, just step by step. Um, but we're going to go through the safety plan guide just to give you uh, a little introduction into, into what this model is, and then I'd love to ask you, uh, based on what little you know about it, um, to one, um, you know, if you think it's a good idea, I'd ask you to take some time, uh, just a few minutes even, in the coming days, go through it, um, because once you go through it, there's a screen where you can give us some feedback. What you like, what you don't like, how we can improve it. And that's why we're out here, we're still in test mode. Um, I'd also uh, ask you to coach me on what other processes, what other things that maybe I haven't mentioned yet, that you, based on your unique individual situation, would really like to see something like this to help you start walking through some of these things that you're just, we're just not born with this knowledge on how to you know, do some of these things. So uh, let me see. Once you get here, after you do your email and, and your password, uh, you can start this guide. You name it so, because it saves it. So you, know, you can put your child's name. This is my, my little brother, James, um, my informal little brother. He's not my blood brother, but um, he's a young man that I spend some time with, and uh, he lives out in Newton, and so that's who James is. So we're going to start, and uh, the resolution, I'm going to shrink it. You're not meant to read these words, because I'm hoping you go home at some point in the coming days and read these words. Um, and. Let me just, something with this uh, projector isn't showing my buttons, I'll just have to scroll down. Okay. But basically this is um, the first uh, essentially screen that you will see after the intro. Um, but it's a lot like all the screens you will see. Um, we, our approach is basically to break down these large unfamiliar processes into parts, into steps so that you can walk through it. Uh, so in safety preparedness, we've broken it down into parts. And basically, in a nutshell, the parts are, um, we, have, we walk you through identifying, OK, who's in a position to make uh, a decision if crisis or emergency happens or a safety issue arises and you're not there? So that could be friends, family, extended family. Uh, the second part is that we walk you through, OK, if you want to build a, a truly robust um, and solid support system around your child, who else should be, you be thinking about? Uh, different types of you know, medical um, and social service uh, spe specialists, therapists, uh, therapeutic mentors, um, 
we're going to get through some of them. The third part is, all right, now, part of our approach here is that you are the expert in your child. You know um, what the triggers are, what the escalators, what the antecedents, um, and then what also the calming behaviors are, what the uh, de-escalators are. But you also know other mitigating factors like medications and allergies, verbal, nonverbal, uh, things like that. So we just simply take the approach that we're going to walk you through um, when crisis or emergency is not happening. Uh, to have you document uh, simply um, on paper uh, what you know about your child so that it can be when you're ready and um, when you decide you can be shared with other members of your child's caregiving team so that five minutes, thank you, this is great, um, so that if and when crisis or emergency hits you can activate this safety plan. Other members of the caregiving team, whether they're related to you or their um, uh, professional care providers can literally be on the same page to have um, everybody respond to that crisis or emergency as, as you would respond to it if you were there. And this is especially useful since you can't be with your children 24-7 for the most part. So if you go through, um, you see the second screen, I'm going to just orient you here. Up here is your progress bar so you kind of have a sense of how far you have to go. Um, here is sort of the um, table of contents, if this is uh, like a book, it kind of tells you what's coming up. Um, we have tabs for completed, what you've just done, and then upcoming, what still lies ahead. But available in this main screen right here is basically the task at hand. And that's our approach, is breaking everything down to a simple task at hand and step by step walk you through. So you'll see on this next screen, this is the first question we've asked. Um, so we're not looking for your personal information. In fact, we don't ask for any personal information. Uh, anything that um, you document uh, is going to be saved on your own computer. And if you don't have a computer at home and you go to the library, um, I have uh, saved some of these forms on a thumb drive that you can take down there. So I would like um, help. Uh, can I just, yeah, would you mind, Paul? Uh, I should have enough. If, if we run out, I have some more in my bag, which I'll, um, I'll be happy to hand out afterwards. And so this is if you use a different computer besides yours? Th that's right. Okay. Because you can, um, okay. all of the documents on that thumb drive are also accessible through the, the website. And I'm going to um, also pass around um, a sample of... Uh, a special education teacher friend of mine filled this out. It's not a real person, but this is the type of information that a, a parent would put down. As you walk through these steps, you get a chance to come across these forms, and if you wish, it's your option. You can pop them open. Yeah, if you can just, uh, you just pop them open, you can fill it out. You can save it on your own computer or thumb drive or both, but that's your information. We don't ever see it. So it's important to note that no, this is a sample of one that's filled out, and this is a blank check. Oh, right. Thank you. Not everybody has printers, so and some people like to take pen to paper, so you can actually fill it out by hand as well. So as I wrap up, this uh, this screen here is a very simple question, and based on your answer, you basically get taken down the path that is relevant to you, so you don't see what's not relevant to you. So if your child's six years old, we're not going to necessarily tell you a whole lot about guardianship and SSI or other things that uh, maybe are accessible at age 18 or even 22 um, or the interim when they age out of the schools. Uh, but if you are 14 to 17, we are going to show you some transition-related uh, info, even in the safety preparedness guide. Um, and uh, so that's our approach. So what we're trying to do is give you a step-by-step walk-through approach to what you need to know and do. Um, we do ask you questions, but basically the answers to those questions uh, allow you to control what you see and what you don't see and what path you take through this uh, all the way to the finish.
Um, I'm going to fly through some of these screens. Uh, I've already told you that this is sort of looking first at the care team, identifying who's there. You'll see some yes-no questions. If you want more information, you can say yes. If you are pressed for time, you can say no thanks. You can always come back to this later using your email address and the password that you um, kind of set out ahead of time. Um, if you don't answer the question, it will remind, that you, remind you to answer the question. And uh, we're trying to cater to, to families. Uh, some parents want all the information. Some parents want the, uh, the bare minimum. Um, so on screens like this, if you want more information, you can check all of these boxes and get it. If you don't right now, you can kind of um, more quickly get through this guide. So we're trying to cater to different types of um, personas, learning styles, uh, appetites for information. And we also uh, kind of break up even emergencies into personal emergencies versus public emergencies. And even within personal emergencies, we break it up into behavioral, emotional, psychological, um, runaway or bolting. Um, uh, if your loved one is prone, prone to being harmed by others or bullied, um, if they maybe get potentially involved in the juvenile justice system and uh, some legal trouble, which uh, is very possible, whether your child has or doesn't have disability. Um, so we kind of thoughtfully walk you through how you, you as parent know these things need to be happened, uh, need, need to be handled. We have you documented in sheets like this. You can save it on your computer uh, or on paper so that it can be shared. And maybe you don't share uh, thank you. Maybe you don't um, share everything with your family members care team, but you are in control of that. You pick and choose. So um, that's it. Uh, we're 13 percent of the way through. Uh, we are taking um, uh, time and energy to make these things as, as short and sweet as possible. Um, so that's going to be a work in progress. Um, so future guides are going to be um, more and more uh, easily completed and so I am going to stop there and all I ask uh, that I mentioned to you before is can you tell me what you would like to see um, us plug into this these web-based uh, process guides I'll take you in the back. Sure. I mean, are, are these editable? I mean, I'm looking at it and it does bring my, help. my son has more meds. He has more allergies. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, it's just, is it ed can we edit yes. this to suit? Yes. And, and there, that's just the first right. cover page. There are, uh, I think, the maybe two pages in, there's a longer form that gives you more space to fill that out. And uh, I do have another question. Sure. Too. Um, I know that DPH has a, a form that, um, like if you have a child with, with a chronic medical issue or whatever that may be going on, um, that like street cleaning, the whole nine yards, the, like through snowstorms. I know that there's an expensive form that has a This is DPH? Department of Public Health. Yeah, right. Um, so to me that, you know, I mean, if you like guys like Google, if it's Massachusetts, and you can maybe say, you know, the Department of Public Health has an official form that you can fill out and it goes to maybe ambulance, police station, um, you know, whoever cleans the streets, you yeah. know, if there's a, a disabled child or a medically complicated child or adult. And there is a, uh, there's a uh, sort of a law enforcement branch that takes you through kind of laying the stuff out for your local police, local fire, yes, so local emergency services. So, but every time somebody like you mentions uh, a new resource like that, what we can do is look that up and then if it makes sense, we can actually, help. so that could be a, in yeah, this as early as tomorrow. To yeah, so we're constantly updating this and adding new sources. Um, we the Department of Public Health has a lot of uh, care coordination and support. They yeah. have a lot of information. Um, yeah. And sometimes it's just, you know, if you can be directed to it. Yeah, and, and we have a number of links in here are to DPH or to care coordinators. So um, that's, that's um, 
in uh, the kind of branch as you go down it, you will come across you know some DPH links, including care coordination. You had your hand up. Yes. Um, for the portions where is more, do you want more information? And there's a yes and no button. Is it a possibility to add a save for later button? Yeah. So we don't have to. It's like, a great to, idea. To go through it all over again. Yeah. yeah. I'm not writing that down because that's something that has already been proposed, and we're already considering it. Um, and I think it's just a matter of time before we do that. Because I like when I get on a website, like a newspaper website, and I can kind of save something for later, because you often don't have time to read it then. So thank you. I will, I will bring that back to our team. Yes? Um, I don't know if you have this in other languages, and if so, what languages? <laughs> awesome question. Uh, we first want to get the model right in Massachusetts for developmental disabilities, for parents and caregivers, uh, and in English. Um, but as soon as we get it right, um, we are going to first uh, translate it into Chinese, Vietnamese, Vietnamese, Haitian, Creole, Portuguese, and Spanish to start. <laughs> so that, th those are our next five, which are, the data shows, those are the five most prevalent after English in, Mass mm -hmm. in, in um, Greater Boston, okay. Eastern Massachusetts, if not the whole state. Yeah. All right, thank you. I have uh, cards up here. Um, I'll let everybody go if anybody wants to kind of. Thank you so much. I will not let everybody go. Thank you, John.